To truly feel the underlying essence or presence within you, the flow of thoughts must decrease for a moment. For most people, this thought flow never stops except when they sleep. When the thought flow calms down, you become fully present with a quiet mind. You can perceive everything you see. You hear. You are entirely there. Quietness doesn't mean you've fallen asleep. It's the opposite in that stillness you're more alert than you'd be if identified with continuous thoughts that inherent stillness exists in every human being. You don't have to strive hard to attain it or think that following the right path will lead to a quiet mind in ten years. No, it's already there. If you're not entirely miserable every moment of your life, it means you have some access to this inner stillness. Even without realizing it, most people feel a bit better. From time to time, not realizing they have briefly stopped thinking, they may explain their good feeling differently. Like they were looking at a dog that didn't think about them. The dog is conscious, but lacks conceptual thought or opinions. So when petting the dog, they might suddenly feel good because for a moment the dog freed them from the conceptual and judgmental mind that would otherwise be very active if petting a human. Humans have judgments about you, and when approaching them, you know they have thoughts about you. Another human can't free you from your thoughts, but a dog or cat can for a short moment, and in that moment it feels good. That's why people love their pets so much. The animal provides some relief from their minds in those moments interacting with your animal. You experience brief moments of thoughtless awareness, two or three seconds. But it's enough to carry on preventing your life from becoming completely miserable. You might also have other moments like engaging in physical activity, like swimming or climbing a mountain. These activities require full presence, leaving no room for thought and you feel intensely alive. This feels good because for a moment you're freed from the relentless flow of thoughts, allowing some degree of consciousness or presence to emerge without you even realizing it. Every human has this dimension of consciousness. Now I admit there are millions of humans where it's deeply hidden and inaccessible, but others are beginning to awaken to this dimension within themselves. So now you don't have to wait for specific things to happen to briefly free yourself. From your mind, you don't have to wait for your next encounter with a lovely dog on the street or a beautiful moment in nature when you take in a forest or the vastness of the sky or at night when looking at a clear sky. The vastness of space, the countless stars, the vast distances and the stillness of it all can calm your mind if you don't find this. And I say find or discover, not achieve or obtain, because it already exists as the essence of who you are. But you need to discover that it's already there. If you don't find it, you're condemned to live a very frustrated existence for the rest of your life. Will be just one damn thing after another. One damn thing never giving you peace. But what truly doesn't give you peace is your mind, which reacts to everything and amplifies each little thing that happens. It's not so much what people call karma. It's not what happens to them but how they respond or react. When unconscious, every little challenge in life becomes a big deal in your mind. The narrative in your mind you call life might say, your life was a failure or a success, but no one can be satisfied for long. You've experienced failure, and some might think nothing worked out. You had big plans, but they failed. Your marriage didn't work out, and the second one didn't either. You got a job, but lost it. Made money, but it made you unhappy because you took out loans and got so stressed you had to seek psychiatric help, which didn't help. In other words, your mind is full and you can't escape the clutter. It's like a room full of stuff nowadays. It's even more cluttered because all the devices people use overwhelm the mind rarely today for those not awakening. It's getting worse for them. You see, there's never a moment. They're not in the past occasionally when waiting somewhere with nothing to do. You just sat there, maybe looking around, but no one does that anymore. When was the last time you saw someone just sitting and looking around because you have to pick up your phone? And of course, the phone overloads your mind even more if you didn't have your phone. You might have a chance for some spaciousness. You might look at the sky and appreciate its beauty, depth, and spaciousness. 
When this happens, the naturally occurring spaciousness, not even consciously embracing spaciousness, but the kind that naturally occurs in a normal person's life, rarely happens today. This is a significant dysfunction, and I don't know what effect it will have on civilization in a few generations, fortunately some are spiritually awakening perhaps, to counterbalance the dysfunction, many humans reenact daily. Clearing your mind isn't a long process. It's an instant shift from thinking to presence. That's why Jesus used the analogy of the kingdom of heaven. He said it was the most important thing, find the kingdom of heaven, and everything else will sort itself out in your life. That was basically his teaching. Be present here and now. Just as you are in this state of presence, we touch the essence of the mind. The original mind, simple and pure care for this essence with your whole being. For in this act lies the purest expression of our mind. Even when lying in bed, your mind wanders busy, even in dreams keeping itself in constant activity. This isn't beneficial. We must learn to let go of the busy mind that thinks without stopping to transcend thought. We must firmly believe in the emptiness of the mind, believing in the perfect rest of the mind. We return to our original pure state. This original mind encompasses everything and has always been rich and self-sufficient. Do not lose this state of self-sufficiency. It isn't a closed mind, but an empty and alert one. If your mind is empty, it's ready and open for. Everything, when listening to a talk, for instance, don't have any preconceived ideas in mind. Abandon your own ideas and simply listen. Keeping the mind empty is being natural. And this way you truly understand. If you bring an idea to compare, your understanding will be partial incomplete. This doesn't reflect true naturalness. Free yourself from all preconceived ideas. Practice and see for yourself what kind of experience your practice brings you simply live always in reality. Moment by moment by forgetting ourselves. We become the true activity of the great existence reality itself. With this realization, all the problems of the world disappear, and we can live fully without difficulties before we were born. We had no feelings and were one with the universe. This state is called original mind with birth. We separate from this unity, like water from a waterfall divided by wind and rocks. This leads us to experience feelings. If you face difficulties, it's because you have feelings. You cling to these feelings without understanding how they arise, without realizing your unity with the river, with the universe. You feel fear. But whether divided or not, water is always water. Our life and death are one upon realizing this. We no longer fear death or face difficulties in life. When the water returns to its original unity with the river, it no longer has individual feelings. By returning to its nature, it finds serenity. Everything emerges from emptiness. The entirety of a river or a mind is emptiness. By understanding this, we find the true meaning of life and can see the beauty of human existence before this realization. Everything we see is an illusion by being able to sit with your whole being uniting body and mind in harmony with the universe, you'll easily reach this right understanding your daily life will be renewed, freeing you from old and mistaken interpretations of life with this understanding you'll realize how senseless your old views were and the uselessness of past efforts. This will reveal the true meaning of life even in difficulties, like the dizzying descent of a waterfall. You'll learn to appreciate every aspect of your existence. When your mind frees itself from external bonds, it becomes unlimited with a free mind. You'll understand that your mental activity is nothing more than waves on the surface of a vast and serene ocean. The great mind experiences everything within itself for us. Plus, there's no fear of losing this connection as there is nowhere to go or come back from. There's no fear of death, suffering old age or illness. We enjoy every aspect of life as an unfolding of the great mind without seeking excess joy. Our serenity is profound and unwavering, restricting our activity to the maximum with no specific object of devotion. We focus solely on the present moment when Boeing do so fully when sitting be fully present while eating. Focus only on eating. 
Thus, the universal essence will always be present, inviting us to exist here and now. The essence of the practice is serenity, and the most important attitude is to understand and trust in the great mind that constantly accompanies us. Trusting in this great mind is essential. Because it is always with us in every moment and situation, we must be able to appreciate things as expressions of the great mind. This goes beyond faith. It's the ultimate, undeniable truth, whether it's difficult or easy to practice, understand or achieve the only way is continuous practice. What truly matters is recognizing yourself as someone in constant realization, reclaiming your true self through practice in communion with all things unconditionally supported by everything without expecting anything. We can truly be ourselves. This is the way to live each moment, fully. And this practice is eternal. It means practicing emptiness, not just understanding it through thought, but experiencing it in practice. If you perceive emptiness and being as opposites, you are still bound by ideas. The emptiness we speak of isn't reached by ideas or thoughts, but where the mind follows the breath connecting the inner world with the outer. Without limits or divisions, don't try to stop your thoughts. Let them flow freely coming and going without attachment. This will open the doors of your mind, allowing your thoughts to come and go without judgment or resistance. Trying to stop the thoughts only shows that they are bothering you. The secret is not to let yourself be disturbed by anything. What seems to come from outside is really just the waves of your own mind by not letting them affect you. They'll gradually become calmer. It takes time for the mind to calm down during practice. Sensations, thoughts, and images may arise, but they're just waves of the mind itself. Nothing comes from outside to understand our mind correctly means to recognize that it includes everything. What we think comes from outside side actually arises within our own mind. You are the creator of the waves in your mind by leaving it as it is. It will find its calm from this calmness arises a wonderful serenity. When you reach this state, you see things as they really are and become one with the universe. The most important thing is to abandon all ideas of gain, all notions of progress, by trying to reach something you simply deviate. When the effort to reach stops, you truly find yourself. Here and now with your body and mind, we don't seek something beyond ourselves. Our way is to practice one step at a time, one breath at a time. Forget the idea of gain. Just sit in a specific posture without thinking about anything. Stay on your cushion without expecting anything. Eventually, you'll return to your true nature, your purest and truest essence. Everything we see around us, the entire universe, is the manifestation of the one absolute, the first veil to... Destroy is ignorance when it is lifted. Sin vanishes. Desire ceases selfishness, ends, and all suffering disappears. This elimination of ignorance can only happen when we know that God and I are one. In other words, identify with God, not with human limitations. The entire universe is a mere appearance which isn't reality, and the notion of parts, small beings, and differentiations is just illusory. It isn't the true nature of each thing you and I and everything in the universe are the absolute, not parts of it, but the whole, all apparent divisions, all limitations are illusory. If you think you are limited, you will remain. Limited if you know you are free. You will be free. Do not identify with the body, and all pain will pass. This is the secret of healing. The universe is a case of hypnosis through D.E., hypnotization. Suffering will end when a man realizes this. All his afflictions are relieved and all his doubts disappear. Knowledge of the absolute does not depend on any book or anything else. It is absolute in itself. No matter how much you study, you cannot obtain this knowledge. Clear the surface of the mirror, purify your own minds, and you will instantly see what you are, what exists, is God. There is no birth, death, pain, misery, crime, neither good nor 
Evil, we confuse the rope with the snake. The error is ours. God never changes, never comes or goes. He is the eternal witness of his own manifestations. Yet we confuse him with the manifestation. And this is an eternal illusion with no beginning or end that continues forever. We have always been perfect and free and will remain perfect and free forever. All these births and rebirths, this coming and going are just parts of a dream. You are infinite. The self was never born, will never be born. Never had a father or mother, friends or enemies. You are existence, knowledge, happiness. Those who receive this knowledge are one with the universe. All sleep disappears, and they find the eternal God of the universe. They reach their true identity infinitely, beyond these small cells that you now think are so important. This is the only way to knowledge to rid oneself of this differentiation, to rid oneself of this superstition of multiple existences. Whoever sees the one in this world of multiplicity, whoever sees this sensitive being in this mass of sensations, whoever grasps the reality in this world of shadows, eternal peace belongs to them, and no one else by practicing meditation they realize that being who is the god of religion, the being of Philosophy and the energy of science, the greater a science, the more varied the ways to study it before we enter. The world God has already given us the means to get out of it. Therefore, the only thing we must do is find them. But don't argue about the methods the dualist naturally tends to be intolerant. Thinking his path is the only one, just seek realization and choose the method that seems most conducive. To each of you eat the mango and let others argue about the baskets, be the Christ, then you will be a Christian. Everything else is words, and the fewer words the better. First listen, then reason, and find out all that reason can know about God. What floods you with reason surpass it. Then take what is left if there is nothing left. Thank God for escaping from superstition. Humans who realize this attain freedom. Go beyond the dream and know themselves in their true nature, and we cannot go further, because we cannot go beyond the unity when a science reaches unity. It cannot go further. We cannot go beyond this idea of the absolute. You are eternally pure, eternally perfect. Know the truth, and be free in an instant. All this darkness disappears when we see ourselves as one with the divine being, when all separation ceases. When all men and women, all animals, plants, and the entire universe merge into this unity, then all fear disappears. Those who worship the material world walk blindly in the darkness, in the world resulting from ignorance, and those who spend their lives in this world without discovering anything better or superior grow in even greater darkness. But those who know the secret of nature, those who see the Unity that is beyond nature in all its parts are the only ones who enjoy eternal happiness. You must remain firm and constant in the investigation of truth. Move resolutely toward truth, even if you have to pass through hell. The truth can cannot be partial. It is for the good of all, finally, in perfect rest and peace, meditate on him. Focus your minds on him and become one with him then no words will be needed. Silence will lead to truth. Don't waste your energies talking. Meditate in silence, and don't let the noise of the outside world disturb you after much austerity. I understood the truth. God is present in every being, whoever sees the infinite spirit in all beings, and sees everything in this one infinite spirit never strays from this unity. All our misery comes from ignorance, which is the concept of multiplicity. This illusory separation between one human being and another between one nation and another does not exist. It is not real. It is a mere illusion on the surface. Unity is at the center of things. If you dive deeply, you will see that all are just variations of the one. Whoever has managed to reach this concept of unity knows the reality of everything the secret of everything. You are. Immortal souls blessed in eternally free spirits. You are not matter. You are not bodies. Matter is your servant, not you. The servants of matter.